Logic Pro have just released their 10.8 update, which includes the brand new Mastering Assistant. In today's video, we're going to go through Logic's Mastering Assistant, all its features, and see if it stands up against my Pro Mastering Chain worth over $1,000. And at the very end of the video, we're even going to do a blind test to see if you can tell the difference between the Mastering Assistant and the Pro Mastering Chain I created. Hey, what's up? This is Fabio from Noise and welcome to Boombox, the home of collaboration. The track we're using today is by the very talented producer Demi and is called Layla's Mood. It's a lo-fi track with some organic elements, but a contemporary vibe. Now, after you've updated Logic, the Mastering Assistant lives on your Stereo Out bus. You'll see it says Mastering there, you just have to click on it. It will then automatically analyze your track. Now, this will analyze whatever is in the cycle at the top of the track, so you will have to set that up. You can always reanalyze the track if you haven't got it set up correctly, so don't worry about it. This will only take a minute, and then it will make some changes which we can adjust. Now I'm gonna take you through the five different areas of the Mastering Assistant. So in the top left-hand corner, we have Character, which is essentially a limiting and compression algorithm. Then we have this Auto EQ and Custom EQ, which gives us control over the frequencies. The Dynamic section, which has this dial for increasing loudness, meters for monitoring loudness, and a harmonic exciter, and a spread dial, which allows us to make our track wider or narrower. And finally, we have a Bypass button, which is very useful, so we can engage and disengage the effect and loudness compensation which is really important for when we're trying to monitor exactly what the mastering system is doing to the signal without it changing volume because we all know louder sounds better so i'm going to pull down the auto eq for now take out the spread and we're just going to focus on the character so we've got four different characters here Clean is upfront and punchy. Apple suggests that it sounds best on EDM and acoustic material. Then we have Valve, which is a signal processing chain simulating tubes. It's meant to give a deep low end and a refined high, apparently pretty good for hip hop. Punch has a more aggressive sound and emphasizes the mid frequencies and suggests that it should be used for genres like rock. And Transparent is a modern and tight sounding compressor suitable for pretty much anything. I'm gonna flick through the characters and see which one suits this track the most. quite like punch and what it's doing to the loan, so I'm gonna roll with this one for now. The next section is the EQ section. So we have the auto EQ here, which is the frequency points that the mastering assistant picked out when analyzing the record, and it's decided to make cuts or boost depending on what it thinks the balance should be. So we can see some cuts between 50 and 100 in the low end, some in the mid range, and then some boosts in the mids and the high mids, probably for presence, and a dip around 5K where it probably thinks things are harsh. So we'll just decrease this and increase this and listen out for the different that it's making to the frequencies. Now I like that you can add this to taste and what they have also given you control over is this custom EQ section, which is a three band EQ. So it's very simple. They don't want it to be complicated. They want you to be able to shape your track and increase and decrease the loudness and the character as quickly as possible so that you're not messing around. 
We've got a low shelf here on the custom EQ. We've got a mid band, which is a bell. And then we have a high shelf for boosting and cutting just like the low shelf. So we can make further adjustments here to the way that the mastering assistant has decided it wants to EQ. Now, I actually think it needs more mids. It's a little bit too bright. I'd like to hear a little bit more bass and a little bit more air. Although it's very clever at balancing things out, sometimes EQ at a mastering stage can be subjective and honing in or focusing on certain elements isn't necessarily something that a mastering assistant can do because it can feel quite personal. And we're trying to draw emotion out of the record. Well, a mastering assistant is not really designed to be emotional. It's meant to be more clinical surgical and does a pretty good job of getting us to where we want to be and then with a custom EQ we can finish it off. Okay next we have the dynamics section so this is the loudness section we can increase and decrease the loudness we have a true peak meter and then we have LUFS meters M stands for momentary S stands for short, I stands for integral. I usually meter the momentary LUFS. And then we have this excite button which will increase harmonics and excite the upper mid range of the signal. We can see there by adding the Excite, we don't have to add that air with the custom EQ, so I just had to make some corrections there. I'm not sure I love what the Excite button is doing, but I imagine if your track is a little dull, it could be perfect for adding some richness to the upper mid range. Okay, we also have Spread. So Spread will allow us to make the track wider or narrower. As simple as that, you could make a track wider if it's too narrow or narrow if it's too wide. We have this correlation meter here as well, which lets us know if we're going in or out of phase. So you want it over to the right in the green, by the way. Last but not least, we have loudness compensation. Now, this is a very important button if you want to check exactly what is going on with the plugin on and off, which is what the bypass button is for. So this will allow you to turn this effect on and off without a change in volume. And that means you can do a perfect A-B test to really understand what is happening to the source signal. Definitely adding a lot of life to the track, bringing up those mids, making it a bit more exciting. I like the compression. I think it's done a fairly good job of limiting. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this track and we're gonna compare it against my pro mastering chain in a blind test. But I want you to write in the comments down below which one you think is which. Before we go on to the blind A-B test, don't forget that these videos are possible because of Boombox, the perfect place to share, store, and synergize your creativity. Sign up to Boombox today and get four gigabytes for free. What I like to use Boombox for with my clients when mixing and doing additional production for them is the timestamp feedback and voice notes, as well as having a home where I can store all of my files, quickly create them into projects, add collaborators, which lets them know that we're about to work on something together, and then we can share precise feedback, which makes it so easy to get to the final result in no time at all. If you need more than four gigabytes, well, it's 200 gigabytes for the price of a cup of coffee. Link is in the description. Get signed up today. Now let's go to the A-B test.
Okay, which one do you think is which? Don't forget to comment down below. Hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you very soon. It's been a pleasure as always and a big love from Noise. Welcome to Boombox, the home of collaboration. Peace!